Hey everybody, Rob Mauer here, and today we are going to be talking about Tesla's influence on competition, particularly BYD, as they have reported their first quarter earnings report, so we'll compare that to Tesla's. We've also got some interesting headlines involving Elon in a court case today. We'll talk a little bit more about a possible Tesla factory in South Korea and a couple other items. Nice rebound for Tesla stock today, finishing up 4.2% to close at $160.19. The Nasdaq with a strong day as well, up 2.4%. And after hours off to a pretty interesting start with Amazon initially spiking up 8% after reporting earnings, but now as the call has started, dropping back to basically even. Not sure what's going on there as it's happening as I'm recording, so maybe we'll keep an eye on that for tomorrow. All right, getting into Tesla news, there wasn't a whole lot today. Most of the headlines around Tesla relating to a court case about a fatal autopilot accident back in 2018. So this is one that we've talked about. We don't need to go through all the details here, but Essentially, the family is saying that there was a software failure relating to autopilot. Tesla is saying that the driver wasn't paying attention and was playing a video game prior to the crash. But the reason this is surfacing in the news today is the plaintiffs are requesting to depose Elon Musk as a part of this lawsuit about statements he had previously made about autopilot. Tesla has argued against this request. And as a part of that argument, not the sole argument, but a part of that argument, was that Elon couldn't recall details around some specific statements and that he, quote, like many public figures, is the subject of many deep fake videos and audio recordings that purport to show him saying and doing things he never actually said or did, end quote. So initially this does sound pretty ridiculous, but sometimes that comes with the territory of a court case. They're trying to find any argument they can that might have some legal standing, and in general, this topic is one that is pretty fascinating. For this specific case, I doubt this is a very compelling argument because this dates back pretty far. So the prevalence of the type of deep fakes that we're really seeing pop up more recently, I don't think was quite there yet. So for some of these older things, it seems a lot easier to validate their accuracy. Going forward though, this is going to get incredibly murky. I'm sure we'll see Supreme Court cases on this at some point. But for now, the judge is not buying that, temporarily ruling that Elon will have to testify in this case and saying that the defense's position is that because Mr. Musk is famous and might be more of a target for deepfakes, his public statements are immune, and that allowing such arguments would allow those types of folks to avoid taking ownership of what they actually did say and do. Anyway, at the end of the day, Elon will probably have to testify on this case, so we'll keep an eye out for that. All right, next up, I want to take a look at BYD's first quarter earnings report. We've been talking about their delivery numbers, their insured vehicle numbers throughout the quarter. And even outside of Chinese New Year, BYD was not quite hitting the numbers that they were hitting in Q4. So they published their Q1 earnings report today. We'll take a look at revenue that was 120 billion RMB, or the equivalent of just under $17.5 billion. And as we can see, that was up 80% year over year. On that revenue, their quarterly net profit was 4.1 billion RMB. That's just under $600 million. And that was up 411% year over year. So initially those numbers sound really good, but I think the more interesting comparison rather than year over year as BYD obviously growing very quickly is quarter over quarter as I think that better captures the impact of Tesla's price cuts, changes in EV subsidies in China, and just in general gives better insight into whether or not BYD is prepared to continue to grow at the rates that they have been growing at. It's kind of like looking at year over year inflation versus month to month. Before we even put those on screen though, obviously a major caveat that Q1 has Chinese New Year, Q4 does not. Just like for Tesla, that's going to have a major impact on the quarter over quarter comparisons, and that's even going to be outsized for BYD because they are more heavily weighted in China as a percent of their business. Now, that being said, the comparison is still very interesting here. So looking at deliveries, revenue, and net income quarter over quarter, Tesla deliveries up 4%, revenue down 4%, net income down about 29%. BYD, though, deliveries down just over 25%, revenue down 23%, net income down 43.5%. So again, the year-over-year -year numbers for BYD look pretty good in isolation, but I think with this context, it's difficult to say that this was not an extremely tough quarter for BYD. And I think in isolation, anybody would take Tesla's results here over BYD's, as that shows Tesla grabbing market share, grabbing scale, and actually doing so at less of an expense to net income than the hit that BYD took while also losing scale and losing market share. To bring in even more context here, there's obviously been a lot of criticism for the decline Tesla has shown in their margins, but still in the first quarter, Tesla was head and shoulders above probably their closest competitor in EVs in BYD. BYD's net income margin was 3.4% in the first quarter, while Tesla's was 12.6%. Despite Tesla's pricing actions, that is still a huge spread. Even with the huge quarter over quarter drops, BYD did not react as aggressively on pricing and the margins, obviously one reason for that. So it's going to continue to be very interesting. Again, obviously this is just one quarter, Chinese New Year impact, all these things. 
but I think the comparative results here continue to show a lot of strength for Tesla. All right, next up, we've got some new data on EVs from CarMax. They have published their spring 2023 electric vehicle consumer report. And one of their most interesting findings is a significant year over year increase in EV search volume on the platform, which doubled year over year, February to February. However, if we kind of carry forward that BYD logic, it has actually dropped a little bit in the first quarter from where it was in the fourth quarter, it looks like. So kind of interesting to see at least a little bit of volatility in used EV search interest. Unsurprisingly, the Model 3 and the Model Y were the most searched for EVs. The Model X and Model S came in in 7th and 8th place. Also interestingly, the most frequent trade-in or the most common trade-in for the Model 3 was a Honda Civic. Second most common was a Toyota Tacoma. The Tacoma is a pickup, so maybe not what people's first guess would be for a Model 3 trade-in vehicle. <laughs> I had to also kind of chuckle at this. They say that Toyota was the most traded-in brand for EVs. Kind of ironic given all of the discussion that we've had on Toyota and their EV efforts, but if we think about it, Toyota probably has the most vehicles out there that could be traded in, so the odds are definitely in their favor, so to speak, for this type of a metric. Next up, just a quick note on the Model S and Model X in Australia. Tesla had previously been accepting orders in the design studio. They've now changed that. The order button now just says get updates. With Australia being a right-hand drive market, Maybe Tesla deprioritizing that, but it looks like they're still taking orders in some other right-hand drive markets. And especially with the inventory that has started to build up for the Model S and X, you would think Tesla would take the opportunity to have a right-hand drive production run. So a little bit unclear on what the reason for this change would be, but something to keep an eye on. All right, next I just wanted to spend a little bit more time on what we had talked about yesterday, and that was Elon meeting with the president of South Korea to possibly discuss a factory in South Korea. There's been some good discussion today on another possible benefit of having a factory in South Korea, and that is that there is a free trade agreement between South Korea and India. So that could be a major benefit for Tesla to potentially pursue that market, but it's a little bit unclear to me right now how extensive that free trade agreement is and what the exact stipulations are regarding the auto market. So the basis for the free trade agreement comes from the India-Korea Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement which according to Wikipedia says that South Korean car manufacturers will see large tariff cuts to below 1%. Usually for India, those tariffs are extremely high, I think in excess of 50%. So that would be a huge boost for South Korean manufacturers, but I'm not 100% sure that this is an accurate report on Wikipedia. Looking in a couple of other places, I found a pretty comprehensive review of the CEPA that says that automobiles have been kept outside of the tariff elimination. And notably, Hyundai does have a factory in India which probably wouldn't make a lot of sense if there was no tariff coming from South Korea. So without a little bit more research, I'm unsure on the exact structure here and therefore the possible benefit. I did try to ask GPT-4. It couldn't give me anything precise, but it did say that the tariff was structured to be reduced over time. Obviously, grain of salt on that. It can give incorrect information from time to time, to say the least. So I'll try to get to the bottom of that. If anybody does have conclusive information on that, please let me know. Last couple of things here, Mobileye did report earnings today and had some interesting comments. Their stock took a beating in the morning down about 30%. It did recover throughout the day to finish down 16%, but somewhat similarly to Enphase like we had talked about yesterday, this wasn't based on their earnings for this quarter, but rather on their guidance, which they cut by about 10% for the year and attributed that to a slowdown in demand for EVs in China. So whether you want to attribute that to Tesla or just market softness in general, I do think it is an interesting data point. All right, and then last item for today, just a quick SpaceX note, Jeff Faust on Twitter reporting that SpaceX has told NASA that it can repair the launch pad and prepare for the next Starship in about two months. Now, obviously that's a probably best case scenario timeline, but I think it is encouraging to hear that report. All right, that is where we'll wrap it up for today then. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And we'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, April 28th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.